Okay, so let's look at this definition of the complex derivative. Now that we've seen some functions on our whirlwind tour, we could have said a lot more and gone slower, but that's not the point here. Okay, the f prime of z, if f is a function, f prime of z is supposed to be the limit as w goes to zero of f of z plus w minus f of z over w. Exactly the same definition as usual, okay? And we saw that when this was an algebraic function, something with polynomials and things like that, uh, didn't, didn't cause a problem, okay? Um, and my claim was that all the usual rules power, uh, like the product rule and all that kind of stuff works. So what's going to screw this up? Well, it's going to be anything where we take the geometric perspective, in well, not anything, but a lot of things where we take the geometric perspective, uh, the x plus i, y perspective, instead of the algebraic perspective. When we, when we artificially take the function, the, the input apart, into its parts and put it back together. So for example, the, um, the complex conjugate function. Okay, so let's look at that. So the whole deal here is that when I look at a limit in a plane, this is something we usually talk about briefly, if at all, in an intro multivariable calculus class. But when you look at limits in the plane, if this is going to exist, it's got to be where w comes into 0 from here, from real positive or real negative or imaginary positive or imaginary negative, or in any direction, really, okay? Or even coming in on a curve, or even coming in spiraling in. But it's actually going to be enough to just look at a couple of straight line directions to see that this will not work. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the real direction, and I'm going to take the limit as h goes to 0. I'm going to reserve h for a real number, okay? And I'm just going to add h. That looks even more like the usual definition. OK, so I'm just going to put in the definition of the function. OK, z is x plus i, y. And I'm going to add h, and I'm going to bar it. And then I'm just going to uh, take x plus i, y bar. Let me put parentheses around that to make sure we know that's a, a unit divided by h. OK, so what's going on here? x plus h is the real part of this guy. And that doesn't get changed. But the i, y gets switched. Okay, and then this is just x minus i, y. Okay, lots of stuff cancels. The x's cancel. Minus i, y and a plus i, y cancel. Okay, surprise, surprise. And then h over h is 1, and so I just get 1. So that's as if it were just z, which makes sense. If I'm looking at the complex conjugate, that doesn't change the real part. So if I start at some z and I walk in the real direction either way, I'm not going to notice any difference between recording z bar and recording z, really, in terms of the change. Okay, So that's the calculation I get if I start at z and I walk left or right. But what about if I walk up and down? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to explicitly put in z plus ih now. And divide by ih. Okay. So I'm, put, I'm just saying w is of the special form pure imaginary, ih where h is a real number. OK. So I'm just going to put that into the definition. That's x plus iy plus ih bar minus x plus iy bar all over ih. OK. So now the real part is just x. The imaginary part now is i times y plus h, and then that's going to be minus, because that's what the bar does. And then this, of course, is just the usual x minus i, y, all over i, h. OK. Now, x is cancel. Minus i, y plus i, y cancels. OK. But now I've got a minus i, h. That conjugate has suddenly seen. It behaves differently on that imaginary addition to the, the input than it did for a real addition to the input. And the i's cancel and the h's cancel, but I get a minus 1. So I'm really done. Minus 1. That's not equal to 1, in case you were wondering. OK? So when I'm looking at this point, and I'm looking at how that goes, like this gets flipped over, if I walk to the right, this goes to the right. But if I walk up, this guy goes down. OK? That's different. That's not how 
um, complex algebra would tell us that things should work. And this is telling us that this is inconsistent. So this limb, the fully complex limit that we want to exist, the limit as w goes to 0 in any direction, does not exist. This is not a differentiable function. And it's not because it's got a corner or a cusp or some sort of weird vertical tangent or anything like that. It's because the, the behavior in different directions is inconsistent. And so that's, that's the most famous example. In a sense, it's kind of the, it's absolutely the most important example of something that does not uh, um, have a derivative. Other examples, I'm not going to work out the details because I've shown you exactly how to do it. The real part of z, which is just x. The imaginary part of z, which is just y, if I, z is x plus i y. Or um, f of, let's say, x plus i y is some sort of artificial combination, 3x minus 5 i y, with these guys being di you know, uh, different. Uh, then if I just break it apart in the x and, I y, x and y, and I just put random coefficients here, those are none of those going to be differentiable in this complex sense. As functions from R2 to R2, from the pure geometrical perspective, where I don't try to combine the geometry of two-dimensional plane with the algebra of complex numbers, these are totally perfectly fine maps from R2 to R2. They're differentiable in the, in the multivariable calculus sense. Okay, But as, I, as soon as I think of them as maps from C to C, where it's got to be consistent with the algebra of complex numbers, they're not OK, and meaning they're not differentiable in this new sense. Okay, It's all about trying to combine the algebra and the geometry and finding that that actually puts some real constraints on what kind of functions we want to consider. Okay, So um, that's a good place to stop this video, because the next thing I want to talk about is something rather different. We're actually done with differential calculus, <laughs> believe it or not. All I want to say about it purely, uh, and we'll start talking about integrals.